On this edition of the Suburban Mix, we've got another great lineup on tap. In our Goodwill Hunting, we're going to learn what questions you need to ask in order to help your high school student choose a college that truly fits their needs. In our Just Cause, we're going to check out the new Strengths Finders program that has been implemented at our very own West Campus and is helping students find careers and newfound confidence. In our neighborhood finds, we're talking Diva Days. We'll find out what Anoka is doing to treat its guests like queens for a day. And in our Behind the Music segment, we'll hear from local artist Scott Kaufman, whose rock and roll spirit is kicking its heels in Anoka. One thing I can tell you is you got to be free. I come together right now over me. All this and more coming up on this edition of the Suburban Mix. Hello and welcome to the Suburban Mix. I'm Jane Eubel and right now I'd like to introduce you to Kristen Edwards who is with College Sphere. It's a local company that helps guide families through their children's educational years and beyond. Welcome Kristen. Thanks Jane for having me. Well you know I really appreciate you coming in because I think um, while you do a lot of things for families, you know, throughout the years with um, education and finding the right schools, with the price of college, it really pays to have someone help them figure out what school to go to. So I guess maybe um, just to help the audience, talk a little bit about what is College Sphere. Absolutely. So College Sphere is a company that really specializes in helping families navigate the entire process of college admissions. And when we work with families, we always start by identifying what we call best fit colleges. And by best fit, we mean a best fit academically, socially and financially. Those are really the three areas that we encourage families to take a really good look at. Um, academically, we want our students to be at a school that is going to be challenging enough, but not too challenging that they're drowning in schoolwork. Uh, socially, we want them to pick a campus that they're gonna be happy, thriving for four years, um, feeling like they fit in and really have a, a place where they can um, prepare for their future. And financially, uh, we really encourage families to be intentional and well-informed about the cost of college so that when they get those acceptances come spring of senior year, that they have a number of acceptances to schools that they can really afford um, and that's gonna fit for their student. Okay, well, that sounds great. And I know those are, you work with all three of those areas, but tell me how you do that. Absolutely. So when we work with students on finding best fit, we always start with that in the admissions process because we know that one out of three students nationally transfers college um, from one college to another. And we think that that's happening because students aren't taking the time to really be smart about finding schools that are going to be that best fit. And so when we work with students, we really encourage families to start early in the process. We know there's a wealth of information out there um, and we really work to uh, individualize the process for kids um, and parents so that they can understand what that best fit is gonna look like. Our students start uh, sophomore year or junior year by looking at nearly 100 different aspects of college. So we start with size and location. Most kids have an idea if they want big or small, close to home or far away. Um, but we start to talk about what does that mean when you mm -hmm. look at a big school that typically means bigger class sizes less access to professors um, when we look at small schools typically that means more of a community feel um, but also not as much of that raw raw college experience that you can sometimes find at a, a big 10 school um, so we look at uh, size, location, and then a number of other aspects. So we really push our kids to consider other things beyond just size, location. Um, we talk about their academic learning preferences. Are they the kind of kid that really wants to talk to that professor after class? Are they the kind of student who'd really like to listen to a lecture and then go home and synthesize the information on their own? Are they the kind of student who wants to be um, at a campus that's really urban and a little gritty and um, kind of have that multicultural experience, are they going to be the type of student that is going to feel happier in an uh, environment that, where everyone looks just like them? So we really encourage our kids to think um, about all those different aspects of a college that's going to impact their choice down the road. 
Well, you know, that's great because I think that's what happens is, is trying to manipulate through all that. You don't know the right questions to ask, which is great that they have someone to help guide them. Now, I know in, a, in addition to um, the academic and the location, financial, financially, sometimes there's some things that parents don't understand. Mm -hmm. So when we look at college admissions, we, we really look at it like a three-legged stool. So we want to find that best fit academically, socially, but then also the financial piece is such a big part of that equation. And so there are a number of things that parents can do before they start um, even identifying colleges, investing in the airfare to go look at schools or in the time to take them touring around local schools um, so that they can be really smart about what that school is probably going to cost in the end. Uh, college costs are a lot like airplane ticket. So sitting on that airplane, uh, the person next to you probably paid a different price for that uh, seat, even though you're arriving at the same destination. And college is a similar way. Um, that sticker price is rarely what families pay. And so we want families to understand what is that price going to be in the end uh, for their scholarship money and their uh, need-based aid as well. There are a number of resources that parents can use to understand um, how to go through that process. And that's something that we really encourage families to do right at the beginning before they start um, getting their heart set on a school or before that student gets their heart set on a school. Which is really smart because you were saying places like, for instance, there's a number of colleges that will match or help make sure you can afford to go to that college. But then there's some Big Ten colleges where you pay full sticker price. And just even knowing those things will help you make a and new it, decision. Yes, and it changes for every individual student based on ACT, GPA, their activities, um, and then of course the, the family's financial situation. So it really is a nuanced, complex process, um, but something that I encourage families to really start um, at the beginning rather than at the end after they get their acceptances. And you're saying more and more families because of this great investment toward college should look to someone like yourself at College Sphere because making the wrong decision is more costly than working with someone like you. Absolutely. There is a growing trend in the, in the nation and certainly in the Twin Cities for families to seek uh, extra guidance through the process. And we see that happening for a number of reasons. We know that the average high school counselor has about a caseload of uh, 800 students for every one counselor. Uh, Minnesota ranks 49th in the nation in terms of their counselor to student ratio. And even the most well-intentioned counselor cannot give that one-on-one -on -one attention that an independent consultant can. Um, in Minnesota, Minnesota, the average independent consultant has a caseload of less than 25 students to really uh, walk them through that process. Um, we also know that on average at the high school level, a student gets about 38 minutes of attention for that college planning and we think that college is too big of an investment financially um, and then emotionally as well as preparing kids for their future. Um, we know that it takes more than 38 minutes to make that right decision. Um, so there is a growing trend um, and one of the uh, things that um, in the profession we are um, working at is educating families about the fact that um, this service is not just for the elite families, it is not um, just happening on the East Coast and the West Coast, and it isn't um, an astronomical price point. There are a number of consultants who really work hard to make their service affordable and accessible for all families. Um, and so we really work to meet families where they're at because we believe so strongly that investing the time and energy to make these choices now is gonna pay off down the road for the student. I totally agree. I think that it will just take a relief and families are so busy and overwhelmed that to, to invest in time with someone who knows the ropes is mm -hmm. a good investment. So thanks for doing your service and uh, thanks for coming in and telling us thanks, about Jane. it. Thanks, Jane. For more information on how to choose a college, check out collegesphere.com or give Kristen Edwards a call at 651-428-0425. You can email her at info at collegefear.com. Many of you may be familiar with the StrengthsFinder program. It's a program that helps people uncover their talents and reveals strategies for developing those strengths and using them to create a successful lifestyle. Now, right now, we're going to head over to West Campus in Champlin to learn how adding the StrengthsFinder program into their curriculum has helped both the staff and students discover their true talents and how to best use them. Let's check it out. Uh, you have been created uniquely. You have talents. You have strengths. 
You have something to bring to this world that the world desperately needs. StrengthsFinder started out with our admin team as a way to learn about each other and it moved into our whole staff and then we went to a retreat with Steve Gahagan where he helped all of us understand not only our talents but then the talents of others and how we work in teams and that sort of thing. But really great teams, you think about great teams, uh, whether it's athletic teams or maybe corporate teams or organizations, uh, rely on you, different people, bringing their unique strengths to the table. If everybody's the same, you don't usually accomplish very much, but it's people bringing uh, their unique strengths. And lo and behold, he extended an invitation to my campuses to actually do this with students, and that's an absolutely amazing opportunity. So the Strengths Finder is an instrument that the Gallup organization has developed over decades of research looking into people's talents. And so basically, when people take the assessment, uh, they find out their top five signature themes. So you get five out of 34, you function probably in the top uh, 10 to 12. You know, the odds of you having the exact same order of someone else in the world is like one in two million. So it really is a, an assessment that makes you kind of uh, unique and distinct. And it helps people you know, kind of understand you know, what they're really gifted in, what their strengths are, and kind of that sweet spot, that sweet zone in their lives where they can you know, work or serve. It's almost like in your brain, you have at least five superhighways, and that you just function so naturally in those that it's easy for you uh, to function in a certain way that other people looking at you might like, how do they do that? The students at our campus are all young adults. They're all aged 18 to 21. They are where they're going to be mentally, you know, personality-wise, where they're going to be 20 years from now as well. So I think this is something that they can take right now and use right now. And I think knowing this at this early age that allows them to see what they need to focus on. My five strengths are an includer, a communicator, adaptability, positivity, and developer. I am very positive. I always have a smile on my face. Everybody says my glass is more than half full. I think it's important to bring it down to a student level because you know, really early on, your perceptions of yourself have a dramatic impact. It makes me think my goal really can happen because, like, all this stuff is going to help me, like, when I go to get a job. At the retreat, uh, I'm hoping that the students have an opportunity to learn more about their own personal strengths and then come back to the rest of the, the school and help them understand how doing something like this can help them in their future as well. So Gallup says the myth is that you spend all this time focusing on your weaknesses. You know, Gallup would say that we live in a remedial culture and we have a tendency to focus on our weaknesses and try to improve our weaknesses. And what they found is the greatest opportunity for us to really make a difference is by working within our strengths. I mean, they've done some studies uh, where uh, people who are good readers and people who are poor readers uh, took the same kind of training. Uh, the people who are poor readers did a little bit better. Uh, the people who are already good just, you know, thrived. It helps you make decisions on what you want to be, it helps you tell you what you could be, and how to pursue your strengths and not your weaknesses. It is a great tool to help us understand one another. It's a wonderful opportunity uh, with students to sit down and have a positive conversation about who they are. You know, it allows me to tailor assignments and, and presentations based off of where they are. You know, it also gives me an idea of who's going to work well with the group, who isn't going to work well with the group, who, if we do have a group, who should be in charge, who should be the, 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 the person who's gathering all the data, and who should be the one that's setting up the plans. And these sorts of things allow you to play into the person's personality as well as their strengths. I want to be an elementary school teacher and then eventually I want to be the principal of my own elementary school. And Strength Finders helped me discover this because it showed me what my strengths are to be able to be that teacher and be that principal. When students are able to understand their five super highways or their five talents, that means they can automatically start to invest in those things. And within the school setting, that means we have the opportunity to educate, to coach them, to work with them and encourage them to follow those. And then they can align those natural talents to whatever their college career goals are. Um, how many of you, when you took the Strengths Finder, it printed out the results, uh, you read through the descriptions, said, that is me. How'd they know that? I think the best thing about Strengths Finder, I think it's a very accurate uh, assessment. I found that in the dozens of people that I personally coach, that most people find that at least four of the five are like, that's exactly me. 
that's who I am. It's, it's the whole idea that we are going to help students understand who they are and in, the, in doing so they have a much better opportunity to prepare themselves for college, for their career, aligning their talents with whatever it is their goals are. I mean, you're really, really fortunate to have a staff that's willing to make these kind of investments in you to focus on what you're really good at. It can make a profound uh, difference in your life. To learn more about the Crossroads West Campus, visit anoka.k12.mn.us. You can also visit the campus in Champlin, or you can call the school directly at 763-433-4500. In today's Neighborhood Finds, we're talking about Diva Days, which is why I'm wearing my hat and brought my glasses. I've asked Tracy Peck of Lillian's in Anoka to come in and tell us all about the fun we'll have on Diva Days this year. Welcome. Thank you, Jane. I love your hair. Thank you. I love your glasses. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, I'm here to talk about Diva Days, which is May 1st through the 3rd, downtown Anoka. Uh, that's a Thursday through a Saturday. And all of the merchants of Anoka have gotten together to create a wonderful, exciting, fun weekend for everyone who comes downtown Anoka to shop. And there's several features that we are going to be using, and one of them is our Diva Day scavenger hunt. And so every yeah, shopper will be given a Diva Day scavenger hunt card, and they will go from shop to shop looking for one specific item in that shop. And uh, once they have found it, the merchant will check off their Diva Day card, and once they have completed their entire card, then um, it'll go into a drawing, and uh, the winner will receive four tickets to the Lyric Arts, and that performance is going to be the Red Velvet Cake War at the place. Lyric Arts Center. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful, yes. wonderful production company, and that um, will include the performance, which will run from May 30th through June 14th, the tickets for four, and refreshments as well. So the winner of the, of the scavenger hunt will get that. And then each um, shop as well will have their own promotions going on. And we will, this is why I'm dressed like this, we will have our own um, Diva days. Diva, undercover diva nice. roaming the streets. And the undercover diva, her job will be to go uh, up to people on the street and, for example, hand them these Ooh. high five coupons. Which high will, five. High five, girlfriend. <laughs> and that will enable them to go into that shop and get $5 off yeah. any item that they want nice. in the shop. And she will also promote other things, like every shop will also have their own special promotion going on, a percentage off something or whatever it might be. And um, she will hand out a coupon, for example. She'd look at someone and say, oh, you have beautiful blue eyes. Here's a coupon to go into Lillian's of Anoka to get a free scarf to go with those eyes. And all kinds of all sorts of other um, specials that were going on that are going on and of course Diva Days would also not be complete without uh, food and beverage mm -hmm. and so all of our restaurants downtown Anoka will also be doing uh, specials like uh, maybe five dollars off a specific entree that you come in for lunch after you're done shopping or you want to stay for dinner that evening and so they'll be giving certain percentage off a beverage or an entree or whatever but it's all leading up to our big kickoff of uh, spring in downtown Anoka and carrying over into the summer. I love that and with this long winter that we've had having May 1 through 3 on my calendar and my friend's calendar for sure. Absolutely. What a great way to be a queen for a day. Absolutely. I love it's it. going to be fun. So we <laughs> encourage everybody to come down, bring your friends, your family, your girlfriends, and have a wonderful weekend. I think it's great. Thanks, Tracy. You're welcome. For more information on Diva Days 2014, go to rediscoveranoka.com slash Diva Days. Well, on today's Behind the Music, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Scott Kaufman. Now he is not only a solo artist, but he also has the Scott Kaufman Band. And you're kind of a rock and roll guy. Mostly a rock and roll guy, yeah. We do some pop and some, uh, some rock and country music too. Yeah, but, uh, but I'm mostly a rocker. Okay, and yes. wha what, how did, were you inspired by that? Where did that come from? Oh, well, geez, um, you know, I grew up on, uh, my dad listened to, to all the, the older rock from uh, Beatles to Hall and & Oates and, you know, uh, a whole range in there to like Three Dog Night stuff like mm -hmm. that, and uh, and so then I got into Metallica and some some of the heavy metal stuff and uh, and grew out of that and explored uh, jazz and uh, and flamenco actually and uh, and like singer songwriter styles and so that kind of all culminated in there and uh, and so yeah 
And so you just play a, b a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Country is something that's kind of new to me, but, okay. uh, but people like it, and I've actually started to really enjoy playing some, some of it. You know, I don't, I don't really do much of the, the old classic country, but some of the newer Sure. Well, it's a little rock, more mainstream, I think. Right, yes. it is a little, it yes. is quite a bit more like rock right, music now. Right, yeah. right, exactly. Well, that's great. Well, I know today you um, performed a Beatles tune and also an Aerosmith tune. That's right. Um, we loved them both. Great. Um, tell me... Um, I know those are covers, mm -hmm. and we're going to have you play them, but you're going to make original music coming up too, right? Yeah, we're going to be working on original music and hopefully uh, start performing it about the middle of this year and uh, hopefully hopefully start recording some of that later this year. And so uh, when that uh, time comes, we'll come back and share some of that with you if you'd like. Yeah. Well, I would love it, and I just want you all to know that you're going to enjoy this version um, by Aerosmith, uh, Walk This Way. Yes. And it's great, and thanks for coming in. And we'll Absolutely. put information on how you can find Scott... Kaufman and his band entertaining around the area. Thanks for coming in. Great, thank you very much. All right, take care. Back so low, I was hiding on the covers and talked to your daddy. She said, said he went seeing nothing till you're down on the moment. Show sure better she knew it. I made a cheerleader with some real young leader. Times I could remember on this. with Scott Kaufman, find him on Facebook by searching Scott Kaufman, and be sure to like his page. Well, once again, we're out of time for this edition of the Suburban Mix. I want to thank you all for watching, and of course, I want to thank our guests and my Cracker Jack crew for their creativity and dedication to the show. If you're interested in learning more about what you've seen on our show, or maybe you were channel surfing and missed parts of the show, you can see it in its entirety at qctv.org backslash suburbanmix. 
And for more information about how you can be on our show, again, check out the website. Now, right now, we'll send it back to Scott to play us out. And until next time, you stay warm and let's hope for an early spring. I'm Jane Ubel. Thanks for watching. Here comes that top he come, pulling up so that he got choo choo wipe all he want, hold and roll, he got head now to his knee. Got to be a joker, he just do what he please. Come together.